Greetings, VC. It's your friend Roger. Here to make a video response to 1204 Willow Maggie's uh, contest, Show Your Colors. Um, uh, before I get to that, um, my little contest officially ends uh, tomorrow, midnight. Um, but I'm given the changes in YouTube, I'm going to extend it uh, till the weekend. I've made a playlist on my channel uh, with the responses that I that I'm aware of. There are 12 of them. Um, they're awesome. I, I suggest you check them out. Um, but if if you go look at that playlist and you don't see your response, uh, send me a message. I will make sure um, everybody wants to play. Gets to play. Um, but I haven't had a lot of time yet um, these days. But I really wanted to respond to Maggie's contest because um, I just love her channel. You know, I don't think we necessarily share the same tastes in records, but uh, I still totally love to watch her videos. And, uh, she just has a great spirit, and uh, I love watching her open VCLT. Folks are showering her with VCLT all the time. It's just, I can understand why. Um, but her, 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 con her Show Your Colors contest, when, what she said at the beginning of that was, was really moving to me. She talked about how um, how shitty things can be, you know, how shitty people can be, and how um, you know it can be hard to get through the shit. Um, but the only way to get by is to focus on the positive. And she talked a lot about how VC is such a positive thing in her life. And, um, you know, it's, it's obvious that. That's true, and um, and I've only been here for I guess a little over a month now, but uh, I I feel the same way. That the VC is uh, one of the most positive things that's ever happened for me. I know, not just not just because the records, you know, the records are incredible, and cool, and awesome, and, uh, you know, but the people that collect these records and get here on YouTube and show them and talk about themselves and what they're into um, and getting to know you, so many folks um, here and through the Facebook page uh, has really been uh, just overwhelmingly a positive thing for me. Um, been around long enough to know that there's controversies here and there I guess that's to be expected, but by and large, the vibe in the vinyl community is just so overwhelmingly positive, and I've been around a long time. I'm going to turn 50 in a couple of months, well, a little more than a month, and um, so I've been online for a long time. It just seems like there's always disruptors. But I don't see that so much here. I guess it goes on. Um, but that's not what this, this is about. And so um, I just wanted to vibe with Maggie's contest. And I like the whole idea. Show your, show your true colors, you know. Not, not the color that you show when you know you're feeling beaten down and angry and wanting to strike back at someone. VC is well, that's the beauty of music for me. Sue's the savage beast. I'm rambling. Uh, oh, before I go too long, I should say what's playing in the background. You probably can't even hear. And if you can't hear, it probably sounds like crap. It's in the other room. Um, you know, I'm doing this on my laptop, but I've been hit with these, you know, copyright things, you know. Yes, this is third-party content. This is not me. This is the great, great Mary Halverson. Her new record showed the vinyl in my last video. This is her septet, Illusionary C, on uh, Firehouse 12. Um, 
think in my last video I called it perfect, and it is. It's maybe the best thing she's ever done. Mary Hollers. So, anyway, wow, five minutes. Um, it's been amusing some of the comments about colored vinyl, and you know, I suffer from audiophilia and nervosa myself a little bit. Um, yeah, I would prefer really well pressed black vinyl. Um, but what are you going to do? I mean, I showed one of these in my introductory video, but one of the first records I ever remember hearing or caring about were these little RCA Victor 45s of classical music extracts. This is Brahms, you know, whatever. But when I was a little kid, what I really liked more than the music itself was this red vinyl. I mean, it's cool. So, you know, if I were to choose between a well-mastered but kind of noisy colored vinyl versus a squashed, over-compressed, ear-bleedingly loud CD, I'll take the colored vinyl. Uh, so I've got a lot of colored vinyl, um, and I, I couldn't possibly pull all of it out. And um, so I'm going to focus on one band. Um, and I didn't even pull all the colored vinyl I have from this one band. That one band is going to be Guided by Voices. Uh, this is maybe their fifth record or something. Um, this is colored vinyl. This is a uh, later reissue on colored vinyl. But I want to talk about Guided by Voices because. I think it fits the theme of Maggie's contest. The whole story of Guided by Voices is just so inspiring. You have this guy, Robert Pollard, Dayton, Ohio. He's, you know, a big jock in high school, uh, goes to college, becomes a teacher, moves back to Dayton, um, and teaches uh, fourth grade math, I think. Uh, in the meantime, you know, this is like the uh, early 80s. In the meantime, he's hanging out with his friend, his brother, Jenny. Hanging out in the basement or the garage. Rocking out. And uh, recording stuff. They made a bunch of records in the 80s. Self-released. Uh, super rare originals. Um, kind of did it as a hobby, I guess. And then, you know, he had kids and he's getting older and... Uh, I think the original Guided by Voices have made maybe four or five, I don't know. They've made a lot of records. Pollard has made a lot of records. And uh, he's like, makes one last record, Propeller, in like 1994, maybe? 93, 94. Um, before this one, I think. Uh, and it captures the attention of this label, Scat, who, uh, who put this out. That was cool. And then someone hears it, uh, and they play a gig in New York and blow everyone away. They weren't really a live band. They would make these crazy records. Um, but there's Pollard swinging the mic like Roger Daltrey and doing the big leg kicks, and it's this big rock show. People were blown away. One thing leads to another. Um, yeah, they make this record, B-1000, which is probably their breakthrough record. Um, so yeah, one thing leads to another. They signed Matador after this, and um, you know, ever since he's lived the dream. You know, the original Guided by Voices broke up. He's formed another band. But, so my copy of B Thousand from 1994 is uh, blue vinyl. It's again a reissue. It's not an original. Um, I think this is around the time they signed with Matador. Uh, you know, they'd signed a scat, and part of the agreement, I think, was that Matador would then distribute or, you know, reissue the scat records. Um, so, the interesting thing about this period, you know, before they, you know, hit the big time, they were making these records on a cheap four track, a little Tascam cassette four track thing. Uh, 
And I don't know, I've worked with those things before. Um, and if you have, you know, they're, it's crude, primitive stuff. It works. Um, but instead of going for like a naturalistic sort of sound, they, they were trying to recreate like big rock records, you know, but using this little four track thing. And they just record a shit ton of stuff. This is the B-1000, the director's cut. This is a 3LP thing out on, on SCAT. Uh, came out, I'm not sure when this came out, 2008 or 9 or something like that. Uh, I gotta show this because because, well, first of all, some of that delicious black vinyl. Uh, but it's a cool record. They, uh, they just recorded tons and tons and tons of stuff and worked with how to sequence it. You know, Pollard's a genius in terms of sequencing an album. You know, and he's a record collector himself. And, uh, uh, has put out a ton of vinyl. I have almost all of it. Uh, not all of it, OG, oh, God, no, but um, it's really inspiring, these guys. So this is a 3LP thing and a triple gatefold with, uh, you know, all kinds of stuff. An essay on the story of the making of B-1000. Uh, they had a bunch of different versions, you know, here's... It was like a cassette cover that they'd made, what it was going to be like. Uh, a lot of the stuff later came out on like the suitcase box sets and other B-sides of singles and stuff, but uh, this collects all the material that they, that they were considering to put on B-1000. And so, yeah, they're using this prim primitive four-track thing, and going, but going for this big rock sound with effects and... Um, you know, it sounds like uh, like a, an old Who bootleg or an old Be Beatles bootleg. You know, the sound quality is kind of weird, but um, it has character. It has it has that it has a personality of its own. Um, again, the audiophilia in me kind of resisted guided by voices at first. You know, it's like ah, right, sound quality is not good. So, by objective standards, maybe the sound quality isn't good, but um, once you enter that world, you know, speaking of, you know, used to hate it, now I love it. I didn't hate Guided by Voices when I first heard it, but I, I didn't get it. You know, I, uh, you know the lo-fi stuff, uh, sort of cock rock uh, thing, you know, but it eventually won me over. Like I said, I've got almost everything Pollard's ever done. Uh, this is another, this is on Matador, a later EP from 96, I believe. What a crazy cover. I don't know what it's called. Sun, Sunfish Holy Breakfast. Back cover. Pollard's an amazing visual artist as well. Does uh, collages for most of their stuff, and it's beautiful stuff. It's, uh, Recently, there was a monograph, Fanographics put, put out, and he had a show in New York. Um, like I said, uh, their whole story is just inspiring to me. You know, this, nobody in Dayton, Ohio, making this, these weird records, and eventually, you know, getting some recognition. Now, so they made a bunch of records for Matador that, that were great, and then the classic lineup sort of broke apart. Tobin Sprout, his songwriting partner, was a painter. And, uh, he had just had a kid, I think, and moved moved away to paint, basically. Uh, so that version of the band broke up, and he hired this band Cobra Verde to back him up on, uh, on one record I'm blanking on the title. Um, and then he fired them, but kept a couple of the members, members like uh, Doug Gillard. Um, anyway, uh, he kept it going, kept the Guided by Voices thing going uh, with all new people. Uh, signed to TBT Records, made uh, a couple records for them, do the collapse in 2000. And um, uh, 
isolation drills, 2001, 2002. And agreed to, you know, let Rick Lukasik produce the first one, do the collapse. Um, went for that genuinely big sound, big studio sound. Uh, and I love that record, it's great. Um, the second one, I think John Schnapp produced, and it's a little more straight ahead rock, uh, but still pretty slick. Uh, it should have been a smash, should have been a huge hit. It wasn't. Um, here's a. Uh, it's called Daredevil Stamp Collector. This is Do the Collapse B sides, on various singles. Uh, this is on the Fading Captain series that he uh, did with Luna Records in Indianapolis. Put out a bunch of records. Uh, some blue vinyl. Uh, interestingly, these these B sides are produced by Rick Ocasek. Uh, but they're not polished off like the tracks on the album. Uh, and there's some great, great songs on here that really should have been on the album. Like I said, I like that album, but uh, uh, I like the stuff on here even, even more. Uh, so, yeah, the um, thing with TVT didn't really pan out like you wanted. It went back to Matador. Uh, made a few more records that were good. But maybe not. Um, he'd given up on like big rock star, and maybe that was for the best. Uh, but figured he could, he could make a living uh, making records. Uh, this is another Fading Captain series. It's an EP called uh, "The Pipe Dreams of the Instant Prince Whippet." It's got a way with words. Here they are hanging out. Uh, this is on White Line. This is again B sides from uh, uh, sure Universal Truths and Cycles maybe from 2000. White Vial. Again, these B sides, some of them are better than the stuff that you find on the album. Uh, I also have all the singles. Uh, here's another Fading Captain thing. This is uh, Hazard Hot Rods, Big Trouble. Uh, it's, um, it's a live thing with Mitch Mitchell and Tobin Sprout and some guy named Larry Keller on drums. Uh, musically, I gotta say this pretty much sucks. It's a real drunken... <laughs> drunken something, I don't know. It's, um, but it's on kind of nice bubblegum splatter. And like I said, Pollard makes a lot of records. I think he averages since around 2003 or so, 2000, half dozen releases a year and maybe a few singles. Um, it's a little hard to keep up uh, since he releases so much stuff. It's not always top shelf, but you know, I love him. Like I said, he knows how to sequence a record. Um, if you don't like the song, I know it's going to come along in a minute. So he's made a bunch of solo records. This is uh, Space City Picks. Uh, this is pretty recent. I think it's maybe 2011. Uh, this is one of his better solo records, I think. Uh, and it's pressed on... I'll be able to see it, but it's a, it's a flesh-colored vinyl, and it looks like. Uh, and the funny thing is, is that there are a couple songs on here that are the most like uh, I don't know, nakedly sexy songs he's ever done. Like uh, <laughs> "Sex," she said. Uh, uh, there's another one. I'm not finding it. But, uh, yeah, this is a good record. It has a nice inner sleeve, more collage work from Pollard. Um, okay, I'm going to show a few more. Seven Inches from Guided by Voices. They're on colored vinyl. Uh, these guys are a record collector's dream come true because he 
He makes a lot of records. His discography's got to be well over 100. This is... Sorry, this is... Plantations of Pale Pink. This is an EP on Matador from uh, 96. And it's on this translucent orange vinyl. This is a really weird EP of very lo-fi, experimental, psych-damaged noise experiments. It's cool. Uh, this is, uh, I think, the second single from the Do the Collapse. And uh, this is on black vinyl, but I pulled this out, so I might as well show it. It's got a great cover with this uh, little wheel. So our eyes change. I like this. This is a couple of beer cans. Uh, this is a uh, Guided by Voices, the classic lineup reunited uh, a couple years ago. And, you know, of course, put out a bunch of records. Uh, some singles. This is Chocolate Boy. Another nice collage from Pollard there. Um, and, uh, you know, this is a cool example of, of colored vinyl, I think. So, you know, the title of the song, A Side, is Chocolate Boy. And the vinyl is this big, thick, honking slab of chocolate colored vinyl. I mean, doesn't that just look good enough to eat? Yeah. Uh, it's got a non-album B-side uh, by Tobin Sprout. Um, just a couple more to make this fast. Here we got uh, Keep It In Motion. Uh, this is a um, nice thick sort of watermelon color final. I don't know. Yeah, a non-album B-side by Tobin Sprout. Uh, it's a little bit more recent. Class Clown spots a UFO, title track from that album. And, you know, his collages, his design work is just awesome. Uh, Let's see, oh, this is in kind of a clear vinyl. There's a little bit of pink to it. I'm just going to show one more. This is uh, off one of Pollard's solo albums. Which one is it? We all got out of the army. Uh, I don't know when it's from. The last few years. Uh, Sort of saving the best for last. This is kind of the, the nicest colored vinyl. You can see that it's a real, it's like a popsicle orange color. Anyway, I'm showing my colors. These are only some of them by one of my favorite bands, one of my favorite artists, Robert Pollard. Um, inspiring stuff. Interestingly, most of this stuff is on black vinyl. I don't know what that tells you. Cheers, VC. Thank you all for watching, and I will see you soon. Peace.